it's sad to see things like that. And a Chris Excel is a nobody can drop any file, but without being verified, that destroys someone's life. Before you even continue, how does she feel? She hates it. She says she's tried to report the account many times. And some of her friends have tried to report the account and nothing. So Chris Ex Chris Excel knows that she doesn't Bianca doesn't like uh, yes. him using the, the picture. Yes. Ah, come on, Chris Excel, bro. Very good afternoon. It's Penny the Black Pen, and I'm on the virtual Mkuku. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm on my own today, but I'm hoping that Yukrutman at some point will join us. If he doesn't join us, then it's just gonna be me and you guys. First and foremost, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and join our family of the virtual Mkuku, especially if you're part of the family of the Hustlers Corner, which is our parent podcast and vodcast platform and then please click on the notification bell so that every single time we drop content you are aware i'd like to apologize from my side to all of you who were confused on monday i saw one of the comments was saying yo i kept clicking refresh refresh and there was no virtual cook guys we spoke about this in the episode before this week's one about the fact that we're going to be trialing a tuesday episode on my Twitter, I got some of you to vote. Uh, in some of the comments, some of you started saying and giving you advice and your ideas around what you think should be happening. And last week, we actually trialed the Tuesday episode. I think it's done really well. A lot of you commented on it as well. And you said, look, we're pretty glad with the Tuesday because Monday gets a bit too busy. The panel show in the morning, then you have to watch The Hustler's Corner, then you watch Podcast and Chill. It becomes a bit too much. Even though the content is there for the whole week and you can watch it at your leisure, some people prefer to watch the premiere and see this thing drop in their own time. So for all of you who voted, for all of you who have been watching, thank you so much. We will carry on for now, trialing the Tuesday episodes. If you're not happy for whatever reason, please feel free to say in the comments below, I don't like the Tuesday. I prefer Wednesday. I prefer Monday. But thank you so much for that. But a couple of things to get through on my side before Sbuda comes through. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Umchasto, Justice Shabalala that I work with here. So I'm not fully alone. At least Justice is here. Uh, one of the things that's happening and one of the reasons why Usbu is not here is we are getting insanely busy. So myself, Justice, have met Usbu. Usbu is a icon in the industry. He's been around for, I think, two or three decades. So to this day, he is busy. He's got business interests. More fire. Ekas in Noble Properties, he's done crypto, he's been traveling the world, he was in America for a couple of months, so he's constantly busy. Now that we have come into his circle, we find ourselves being busy. I shoot multiple on multiple platforms, I've got my own business interests, I'm a father, for those of you that know, I'm a father of six children, sometimes I'm traveling to see my kids, sometimes I'm babysitting, you know, my, my kids as well. Justice himself is busy. So there's certain days that we cannot be together and we always need to squeeze a day in. We happen to be filming this on a particular day to be able to drop for you guys so that Justice can go home and edit and make sure that the episode is pretty and ready for you guys. But the reality is our schedules are so tight. So, so tight. And we're going to carry on trying to squeeze for you guys. I'm just trying to explain why Usbuda is not here. Tabo Pesta. Oh, jeez. Tito was a George Koch. Usbuda asked me last week about Utabo Pest said he heard a lot of people speak about Utabo Pesta. What's the story? And it seems the more onion layers we peel, there are just so many more layers. So for those of you who actually don't know, Utabo Pesta is this gentleman who escaped from a prison in Mangawung last year in 2022. And we're only finding out now, almost a year later, that this guy who was allegedly, who allegedly burnt to death, actually escaped and did not burn in prison. He is linked to his girlfriend, potential customary wife, Dr. Nandipa Makutumana. And they are currently on the run. Nandipa's dad has been interviewed. Nandipa's brother has been interviewed. There are links to high politicians. There are links to senior prison officials in those spaces who somehow are involved in this thing. There's a private security company, GS4 or G4S, GS4, G4S, who have been running the Mangaung prison. Apparently three of the guys or some of the guys, they have been fired who've allegedly been involved in the Tabo Pesta case. The guy from prison went and hosted a seminar streaming and raised millions of rands. He was renting properties in Santon, in Hyde Park, for tens of thousands of rands, which they weren't paying for. And now all of a sudden he's on the run. They've been 
interviews, there have been news articles of people trying to explain what's happening, the evidence they have. And to this day, we don't know where Tabo Peste is. And again, for some people, they are asking, but what's happening to the South African police services? What's happening with the Minister Peggy Kelly? One of the potential positives, bittersweet, that we heard in the past week is the fact that five suspects linked to the AKA murder were arrested in Cape Town. A lot of people are asking questions, but why Cape Town? And the reality, guys, is that sometimes when people commit crimes, they then flee and they run away and they're going to hide somewhere else. These guys, their fingerprints, their fingerprints were found on the car that was used to get away from Florida Road in Durban. And these guys were found in Cape Town. Sweet. The bitter part is the fact that three of these guys have been released. One of the guys is still in custody and I'm not sure about another guy. So we still don't know if there's actually going to be justice linked to this case. And we still stay in hope and there's still the hashtags justice for AKA, of course, for Tebes as well, who was also gunned down in Durban at that period. Tabo Pesta, AKA, that's where we are as a nation. The other story I want to speak about is in Lesotho. So there's a minister of parliament in Lesotho. Lesotho, for people that don't know, who maybe aren't South African, Lesotho is a small mountain country, nation, in the middle of South Africa. South Africa is this entire big country with 60 million people. And in the middle of this country is another country, country within a country, called Lesotho, the mountain nation, in the mountains. And in this nation, there's a member of parliament, Minister Tepo Di Polo. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Di Polo. L-I-P-H-O-L-O, -O, Minister Di Polo, who is saying that Lesotho wants to claim the free state as part of Lesotho land. And a lot of South Africans, boy, on Twitter went crazy because we don't know our history. We don't know how some of these countries have been set up, unfortunately. And for those of you who don't know, please go and study the history. U King Mshueshwe, who was the first and the longest reigning king of the Lesotho nation, who falls under the Kwena, the, the, the Nguenya in, in Nguni language, the Kwena clan. There's also the people of Dawung, the people of the lion in the Lesotho mountains. And these people are saying in the free state, we want to take the entire free state as our own. They haven't fully signed this as a law. And it's something that's currently being discussed, but already it's raised flags in KZN. It's raised flags in the free state. And for a lot of South Africans, the conversations are being raised now of what exactly is happening with the land issue in South Africa, in Lesotho. Do these people have a rightful claim to say that that land is theirs? And if it is theirs, is South Africa willing to hand back this land to the kingdom of Lesotho? Some of the conversations, at least from my side, were maybe it's time we remove some of these borders. At least in Lesotho is already a country within a country. Some of the border fences don't even exist. So why are, why are we not saying Lesotho become one of our provinces? We will allow you to retain your kingdom, just like there's a kingdom of Guazulu, just as there's the Royal Bafo King, just as there's the Venda Kingdom. We will allow you to retain your kingdom. But then from there, you will guys will become a province and we will be able to work together. I'm interested to hear some of your thoughts around Lesotho claiming that they want the free state. Are you guys happy? Is this going to lead to some type of conflict? We speak about Russia and Ukraine now. Lesotho is a very small nation of 2 million people. Someone said in the comments that we, can, we don't even need to worry about Lesotho. We can just send us all to go and deal with that land claims issue. And are the people of Lesotho willing to sit down with us as a South African nation and say, look, can we maybe begin removing the borders? Can we get South African IDs? And can we maybe start moving some of these colonial barriers that were set up for us? A part of the research that I've done in the past on my side is trying to figure out what makes a country, what makes a nation. The smallest country in the world is the Vatican City, which is up in Europe. Why is it allowed to be a, a country if it's so tiny? Why is it allowed to have its own currency? And the shortest answer to that is you have to go and appeal to the United Nations. You have to go and convince as many important nations as possible to give you your own sovereignty. The Soviet Union was a big chunk of land and then it was broken up to Russia, Ukraine, the Czech Republic, so Slovakia. Because those countries said in this space, we would like to have our own land and our own sovereignty. Right now, there are people in the Western Cape saying they want Cape independence and they want to campaign. And some of them understand the processes. You start saying this is our own country. You maybe throw up a flag. You maybe come up with an anthem. You maybe start getting the people to say, no, I, believe, I belong to the nation of the Cape. 
And then you start going and you pitch and you, and you ask for the United Nations, for America, the USA, for the European Union, for parts of Asia to recognize you as a sovereign nation. And then from there, forcefully through the process, once enough countries recognize your sovereignty, you can start becoming an independent nation. And if you look at some of the work of the EFF and them saying we need one Africa, if you look at the work of Muammar Gaddafi of the African Union before he was assassinated, these guys were saying we need to redefine the borders for ourselves. Maybe we need to bring Mozambique in. Maybe we need to bring the kingdom of Eswatini in. Maybe we need to bring, build new borders. One of the tweets I saw last week was a white gentleman saying, to be honest, if you look at the diversity of South Africa, we cannot be unified as one because we're so different. His suggestion was this, KZN, Wazulu, and Pumalanga should be its own nation. He was saying Limpopo and Johannesburg should be its own nation. The Northwest province uh, and Botswana should be one nation, which it used to be Boputsatswana. It should be one nation under Omangope back in the day. It should be one nation. The Cape should be its own nation as well. And then the Eastern Cape can be a nation unto itself. So that becomes a talking conversation. And we're in one of the greatest periods in history where we have the power to maybe campaign for new sovereign borders and say, no, we'd like to include these people. We'd like to exclude these people because our cultures are so diverse, because our languages are so diverse, because our lines of trade are so diverse. And we can decide from there if we want visas, if we want to have a strong border control, or if we want some other type of situation in terms of how we work together as a nation. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts because some of your thoughts inform myself. I get to run something that I think is pretty cool now. I run a lot of polls on Twitter and those polls get to inform me in some of my research where a thousand people, 3000 people get to have their say. And when I speak in videos, I can say, but in my time on my page, I got a thousand people stating that they believe we must remove the borders or we must keep the borders. I know for a lot of people coming with the, ele the national elections in 2024, they are saying one of the major reasons they refuse to vote for the EFF is because the EFF wants to remove the borders. EFF supporters are saying, but you guys don't really know the policy. We're not saying remove the borders. We're saying Africa must be an Africa for all and we need to start the conversation around should we remove the borders, should we change the borders, and how should that work? So that becomes a conversation and your opinions matter. Some of us who have access to politicians that listen to us, who have access to certain international people that have influence at the highest levels, the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, they listen to us and we listen to you. So it's up to you to share some of your thoughts. If you're a Sutu person, a Basutu person from Lesotho, please sh share some of your thoughts in the comments and say, no, we would like to integrate with South Africa or no, we would like to retain our sovereignty. But in that conversation, also add the fact that we've got so many illegal immigrants from Lesotho that have committed crimes in South Africa that we can't track, that come to South Africa and become Zama Zama miners, that come to South Africa and do heinous things that become a problem. And what do you think about some of those people? Lesotho is just 2 million people. Maybe we can integrate and make Lesotho part of South Africa. And because the mountains obviously border Ukasa and the Drakensberg, we can maybe even rename that entire mountain range and make it a fully South African mountain range. What else do I have for you guys? If you've watched, uh, I don't know if you're a Marvel movie, Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, fanatic like myself, but I watched the latest Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania, which featured quite an amazing actor in the form of Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors is basically Hollywood's new it boy. He's the bad guy, the villain in the new Creed movie, Creed 3, alongside Michael P. Jordan. I think it's directed by uh, Ryan Coogler, you know, who did uh, Black Panther uh, 1 and 2. I think he was the first African-American director to get a big budget. He got a budget of 300 million US dollars to do Black Panther. So he did Creed 3, which became the first sports movie to be on the IMAX. And Jonathan Majors is there as a villain, sensational acting. Then he came as the next villain of the Thanos. If you know Thanos from Avengers Infinity War, if you know Thanos from Avengers Endgame, he comes through as someone just as powerful known as Kang in the Quantum Mania, the Ant-Man movie. And his acting is, it leaves you breathless. 
And a lot of people had criticisms around that movie. It wasn't that great. It wasn't one of the best MCU movies. But all of them undoubtedly were saying Jonathan Majors has been a breakthrough star. And we're looking forward to seeing more Kang movies. But now, sadly, last week, Jonathan Majors goes and gets arrested for allegedly assaulting a woman. This woman opened a case. She said that he slapped her and damaged her face. He grabbed her by the neck and he was arrested. He was released on bail and his lawyer is claiming that there is no case here and that he is just a victim of a lady that he knows and them having an altercation. And it just takes me back to when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, at the Academy Awards. And Denzel Washington on a platform said to Will Smith, it is when you're at your peak that the devil comes for you. And when I heard about this Jonathan Majors issue, that was the first thing I thought, that this guy is peaking in Hollywood and all of a sudden he's getting arrested. All of a sudden his name is being tarnished. But while I was thinking about that and Denzel Washington's line of, when you're at your peak, the devil comes for you. I started thinking about this concept of Ansi Kronier, who was captain of the Proteus back in the day, speaking about the devil made me do it, where he was involved in um, a game match fixing. You know, match fixing is very big, especially in cricket, especially in places like India. And he was involved in, in that and, and he became this bad guy and he said, the devil made me do it. Sometimes I worry about when we don't take accountability for our actions. If Will Smith is going to say the devil made me slap Chris Rock, if maybe Jonathan Majors is guilty of assaulting a woman and he's going to say the devil made me do it, are we happy with that? And we're going to not say, but it was you. Maybe you are not in the right frame of mind. Maybe the fame is getting too much for you. Maybe it's, it's social media noise. Maybe you're struggling to maintain your emotional intelligence and you can't take care of your mental illness. I think in South Africa of certain people at their peak who ended up doing things or being accused of things and almost having their careers tarnished. Okay, Malum Kulket, who was accused of, I think, sexual assault, if not sexual misconduct, while he was overseas and he was arrested. And from there, as a rapper that was on the rise, and one of my favorite rappers in South Africa, his career basically fizzled, where today he's almost a nobody. You think of someone like Uprix, Pricado, who was arrested for statutory rape, who was at a peak and releasing hit after hit. You think of another amazing rapper such as Pitch Black Afro, you know, who was, when he released Styling Gel, it became the first platinum selling hip hop album in South Africa. He was unique, he was innovative. And at his peak, he goes and he gets arrested, I think, for culpable homicide, if not murder in the first degree. What does that have to say about where we are in society? Our state of, of mental health. We've lost people. We mention them all the time because it's fundamentally important that we keep speaking about this. Ricky Rick, Double HP, other people that have taken their lives. What is it? Is it the fame that is too loud? Is it the fans that are constantly in their DMs? that are harassing them in the streets. It could be that you're famous, you're Jonathan Majors, you're a Hollywood star, and you're in a space and someone is harassing you and pushing you and almost instigating and provoking you. How do you push someone off? What if they keep bugging you? All of a sudden, if you push them, they claim that you assaulted them because they know, number one, you're famous. They know, number two, that you have money. So you'll be able to hold that and you'll be able to pay them and they can in some way extort you for your fame. It's something for some of us to think about if, when DJ Spoo comes here, it's something that I'd like him to share his thoughts on. The amount of hate that he's received, the amount of trolling that he's received. You have to start wondering how that affects his mental health, how he does not lash out and swear at people and maybe beat up people. How do you ensure that when you're at your peak, whether you call it the devil that comes for you, whether you call it a lack of emotional intelligence on your side, whether you call it whatever you want to call it. How do you maintain your sobriety and make sure that you remain humble and make sure that you remain making the right decisions? You could be in the wrong place at the wrong time and someone gets shot and your name gets in the, in the papers. We see now with certain stories of people like oh, Ata Mafukati of Triple Nine, Terry Peto, you know, who was part of its Oti, which won an Academy Award, you know, and how they've been linked to scandals and money that has disappeared. What advice can these people give to young people on the come up? To other maybe successful, famous people that are struggling with noise, with harassment and those type of things. 
I'm looking forward to hopefully Jonathan Major's career not being destabilized de during this. I'm looking forward to seeing more Kang movies. The guy's acting is phenomenal. His versatility is insane. And if you look at his body transformation, it's, it's something to marvel at, if you excuse the pun. So we're going to keep watching how that happens. One of the other stories that came out in the last week was a gentleman by the name of Mbuso Muloi, who was linked because he went to a prestigious school, Westville Boys in Durban. He was linked to that school. He was seen during the looting where he was carrying a basket from Woolies, walking into his Mercedes Benz. And then from there, he went and he got arrested for looting, for stealing. Under the looting and the rioting, arrested, of course. The guy committed a crime. He was caught, maybe because he went to a prestigious school, people could identify him because there were so many other people that stole that no one spoke about, that no one identified. Maybe it was the fact that he went to his Mercedes Benz and people picked up maybe the number plate. He was arrested for what happened. And then he had to pay 5,000 rand bail to get out. And then he was waiting for sentencing. If you look at that basket of goods, it could have cost 1,000, 2,000 rand at most. He's having to pay bail of 5,000. He's had his Mercedes Benz repossessed. You can imagine he's got a criminal um, record now. You can imagine how many people have now blasted him for stealing groceries. And then you start looking at the injustices compared to the looting that happened with the COVID relief money, the supposed 500 billion rand relief package. You start looking at uh, Marcus Uester, who led to the loss of over 200 billion rand with Steinhoff, who initially was fined 162 million, 162 million after 200 billion rand of pension money. Our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers' money that was gone, fined 162 million. Then a tribunal thereafter lowered it to about 15 to 20 million rand. And you ask, is that fair? President Jacob Zuma, ex-president Jacob Zuma with his team that went and they took close to 250 million rand to have additions with Inkaanja, money that was looted. He was fined, thanks to the report by Tuli Matonzela, who was the public protector then, fined about close to 8 million rand, 250 million. They didn't go to jail. They didn't go to jail. They didn't have to pay bail. They don't have criminal records. And when you look at what they were fined, it was a fraction of how much was taken. It's almost like saying with Tumbuso Moloi, assuming that he stole groceries of 2,000 rand, him being fined 100 rand. No criminal case, no charge. But you look at these injustices and how in this country, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. And you start getting a bit angry at what's happening. With everything that's been happening now, you think of the past, Cyril saying he's not responsible for electricity. You look at what's happened with Ipalapala. Thabo Mbegi went and he wrote a letter to the deputy president of the ANC and the deputy president of the country now, Paul Mashatile, wrote an open letter asking, why did the ANC majority in parliament vote against an investigation into Palapala? And Thabo Mbegi went and he said, clearly the ANC is aware that there's something to be found there. Sil Ramaphosa was protected. Chief Justice Raymond Zondo went and he was speaking. I think he was getting an honorary doctorate. I stand to be corrected. But he was speaking on a platform somewhere about Jacob Zuma and the corruption and those things. It's like, but you're Chief Justice. You're the head of the law in this country. Why are you having political bias? Does it mean that you're captured? Does this maybe explain why Jacob Zuma refused to come to the State Capture Commission after he initially came and then later on said he's not coming anymore because there's a conflict of interest. It really leaves you sad about the state of this nation. As I already mentioned, the Tabo Besta case, you look at the AKA and Tibbs case, many unknown people are not getting justice in this country who have got relatives that have been killed, relatives that have been raped, but nothing's happening. The number one citizen, the ANC that people vote for in parliament, when it was asked, please go and investigate the supposed millions of dollars at Palapal, they said, no, we're voting against that type of investigation. And an ex-president to Tabo Mbeg is calling out the ANC and saying, look at what you guys are doing. And then we wonder why we're grey listed. And then we wonder why other nations are saying, no, but there's something dodgy and fishy here. And then who suffers at the end of the day? It's us. We suffer at the end of the day. Sat down with the 
gentleman who's a good friend of mine, Rutendo Matinyarare, who's a Zimbabwean national who lives in South Africa and has got South Af African residency. I sat down with him after a documentary was released by Al Jazeera called The Gold Mafia, where in that documentary, they're trying to highlight the gold that is being smuggled out of Zimbabwe, um, trying to breach and run around sanctions of which some people believe that there are no sanctions in Zimbabwe, even though uh, President Emerson Mnangakwa has said on platforms, we are sanctioned. A lot of people criticize me for sitting down with Rotendo saying that he's a ZANU-PF spokesperson, you know, but he's a, he's a voice and he's pro-Zimbabwe and he's pro removing sanctions and Zimbabwe on the rise. People have suggested that I sit down with a Hopewell Chinono. I've sent him DMs, I'm looking forward to Hopewell or someone in his team reaching out to me and saying, Hopewell is willing to sit down and chat to you from a different perspective about the corruption in Zimbabwe. Because the reality is, as a South African citizen, I'm not involved in politics at no real level, but I do care about our neighbors for various reasons. One of the reasons is that these are fellow Africans and it cannot be that we turn a blind eye to any atrocities with our neighbors. In the same way, many of them didn't turn a blind eye when we had atrocities under apartheid and colonization. People have been asking what's happening in Swatini where at some point we couldn't get in and out of the country and where the internet was switched off. What's happening in Swatini and who is brave enough to speak? Rotendo is brave enough to speak about Zimbabwe. Hopewell Chinono is brave enough to speak about Zimbabwe. We want more of those voices. Number two, as a South African, there are many Zimbabweans here. Many of them are legally here and we're happy to have them here, especially with their skills. But many more are here illegally. And I have an interest to fix my neighbor's home so that a lot of the illegal guys can go back home and rebuild their home so that we don't have to be fighting over the few resources and scraps that we have in this country of South Africa ourselves. We don't like the xenophobic tension of which you could call it xenophobia. Weirdly, for some reason, the Russia and Ukraine conflict is not called xenophobic, but it's the exact same thing. It's two different nations who share a race. The issue is mostly land. The issue is mostly resources. But I want to thank Rutendo Matinyarare I'd like to, again, appeal to Hopewell Chinono. I'd like to appeal to any other voice from Zimbabwe that is brave, that is going to be as objective as possible. Not because we're trying to bash ZANU-PF, not because we're trying to bash Mnangagwa, but because we're trying to fix Zimbabwe so that the country can go back to the greatness it used to be at some point when Bob Marley was releasing a song called Zimbabwe, when it was the most illiterate, most literate, uh, nation on the continent and at the best education system. We want to trade with Zimbabwe. We want to go and, 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 and trade with them in the mining, in the tobacco, in other spaces as well. And it requires some of you, some of you guys who are squatters, some of you who are hustlers on the hustlers corner. Please say some of your, your thoughts in the comments. I appeal to the people of Lesotho earlier about the claims of the free state. I'm appealing to some of you now to be brave and speak. I know some of you are scared. But as long as you are scared, nothing will change. It's when people are scared and it's when people are complicit, as we've seen with Nazi Germany, that atrocities get committed. That's why some of us are speaking loudly about the corruption of the ANC. That's why many people speak out loudly about the fact that there's still high inequality in this country, that there's still a minority wealth, which is largely white, and that has co-opted another very small minority of rich black people to act as a buffer between this elite minority white and, and the masses who are angry and suffering. It's pretty sad for someone like me. So my appeal to you out there, looking at the work that we're doing, please reach out to us in various ways. But don't just reach out with words. Make content, show your skills, take some of these clips and edit them and post them out there. I love you guys very much. I believe in you guys very much. I appreciate all the support that we've been, we've been getting. Outside of all the doom and gloom that I've been speaking about, a lot of you guys are paying members to our channels. We appreciate you. A lot of you guys that we meet in the streets always give us big ups for the motivation, for the inspiration. And it's thanks to you guys that we carry on doing the work that we do. It's thanks to you guys that we have stories to tell about entrepreneurs out there who are trying their best. Speak about so many celebrities that have done amazingly well around the world, but there are South Africans in South Africa that are blazing the trail. There are new kids every single year that are getting into the entertainment industry, whether it's through hip hop, whether it's acting, uh, whether it's as MCs, uh, whether it's in production. There are new kids that are pushing podcasts and vodcasts today. There are new TikTok stars today. 
There are some of you that are starting farming projects. That are starting farming projects and people don't know who you are. And it's up to you to use your cell phone, use the internet and capture content and share it with the world out there. And then there are so many other black, Indian, white, colored, Chinese, Taiwanese kids in this country that are collaborating on projects. Whether it's technology projects, whether it's crypto, whether it's manufacturing businesses, whether it's something in the finance space, um, whether it's import, export, whether it's in the entertainment industry. To all of you guys, man, we love you. Please share most, more of your stories. I want to send a shout out to Joshua Rubin. You know, very young white chap from Cape Town, the Wide Awake podcast that I've connected with. If you look at some of the work he's done, especially interviewing ex-gangsters in the Cape, people that other people fear to go and tell their stories. Shout out to the team at the Agenda Network. These are the people out there who are telling stories. These are the people out there who are making a difference. And we are collaborating in different ways. And not just races, but nationalities. Like I said with Rutendo Matinyarare. I challenge all of you guys from Lesotho. I challenge all of you guys from Eswatini. I challenge all of you guys from Mozambique, from Zimbabwe, from Botswana, from Namibia, from Zambia, Malawi, from the DRC, from Nigeria, to reach out to myself. Show me some of the content you've made. Show me some of the education, some of the work that you're doing. And let's sit together and show a pan-African or have a pan-African conversation and show pan-African relationships being built. Shout out to all the Africans in diaspora that constantly comment, that give super thanks and donate financially to the work that I do, to the work that DJ Spoo does. People that are in North America, some of the people in South America, some of the people that are in Europe, some of the people that are in Asia. We appreciate you guys and we expect you guys to lead in those spaces and open the door so that we can get more South Africans and Africans to be able to travel and meet up with you guys. We need to, whether we're streaming via Instagram, Zoom, we need to have these conversations constantly so that we can make the world smaller, so that we can trade and so that we can be better together. I think in closing, I want to say this. So many people ask me, Penn, how can we get involved in making the country a better place? The reality is very, very simple. How you get involved is this. Buy from your people. Your people is not a race. Your people is not a religion. Your people is not a nationality. Your people is a group of people that share your values. People that agree with the things that you agree with. If you're pro-black, people that are pro-black. If you are pro-South African, people that are proudly South African. If you're a pan-Africanist, if you're maybe a globalist, if you're maybe a feminist, if you're transgender, you know, if you're LGBTQI+, whatever it is, people that share your values, buy from those people. People that share your values, work with those people. And then very importantly, and this is something that was inspired by Ernst van Sale, who's a spokesperson at AfriForum. He said, if we could get every single South African, every single South African to come through and every week contribute 30 minutes, one hour of their time and volunteer 30 minutes an hour in building their community, the community will be better. <laughs> but it's better late than never for it. No, I'm good, thanks. I was about to shut down the, the podcast, but uh, I think we're going to keep it going. If we're not going to keep it going, I'm going to have to excuse myself. I think I've already explained to you guys that some of us are busy and have family and other commitments. But we're going to greet him. I'm going to give him a quick summary of what we were speaking about. And then depending on the time, I'm probably going to have to leave you guys in his capable hands. DJ Spoo, how are you doing? I'm, I'm blessed, my brother. I think, according to our notes, we're at um, Tabo Besta, because now I know about the story. That's all. <laughs> and thank you guys for sharing the link last week. Lesotho claims, aka suspects arrested, Jonathan Major's arrest, the devil made me do it, Hansi Kronier, Pitch Black Afro, Bricks, OK, Malum Cool Cat, and Denzel Washington. Have you covered all? I've covered everything. Are you serious? Yes. I, to play I missed out, bro. We've been pushing for close to 40 minutes. Nah. 30 minutes. That's one dope, man show, Baba. No, that's dope, though. I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. And one of the things I'd say to the squatters, uh, first and foremost, I thank them. Because if you look at the views from the Tuesday drop, 
they weren't too bad. But I said, if they're still not happy with the Tuesday, if they still prefer a Monday or any other day, they must please let us know in the comments because we listen to them. Uh, number two, one of the things I wanted to speak about was, in particular, Jonathan Majors, who's a huge Hollywood star, Creed III, uh, Quantum Mania, who's been arrested for allegedly assaulting a woman. He was released. And the fact that with the Hansi Cronier story and Denzel Washington saying, when you're at your peak, that's when the devil comes for you. Um, Hansi Cronier said, the devil made me do it back in the day. I, I gave a story of how that worked. I mentioned Pitch Black Afro who's been arrested. I've mentioned Luke Briggs who's been arrested. I mentioned OK Malum Kulkat who was arrested at some point. In Australia, yeah. And what I wanted to know from you as someone who's been in the industry for 10, 20, 30 years. I'm not 30 yet. How? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Prayu yet. May his soul rest in peace, our legendary father. We we'll miss you, sir. And thank you for paving the way. Sorry, yeah? So I, I wanted to hear from you. And I think the squatters would like to, to know, how do you keep your mental health in check? How do you keep yourself humble and not angry when you're so famous, so popular, and everywhere in the streets, people are harassing you? Everywhere in the DMs, people are swearing at you, calling you names. You might be in a club and people are, are pulling you as an example, and, and you're trying to just politely ask them to a point where you end up maybe pushing someone and then they say you, assault, you assaulted them. A woman maybe you meet and you guys like each other because you're young, you're good looking, you're famous. You guys have a mutual understanding. Ksasa now she's saying, this guy raped me and now you're getting, you're getting jailed. Like, how have you been able to maneuver around some of these things that it seems other people like even a Will Smith when he slapped Chris Rock, failed too in everything that he did. How, how have you been able to overcome that? A very, very good question. And there isn't a formula, Mr. Peniel. There isn't a formula, guys. Um, you get into this thing. They say sometimes fame can be a drug. You know, just like social media can be a drug, just like it is right now. We're all on our phones. Um, we're walking like this. Our heads are down. You look around at a place like this, people are on their tables. Some of them are even having dinner or, or lunch or something across the table. You can see there's like four or five or six people, but more than half of them are like constantly on their phones and it's a drug. I'm just making an example in social media, but that's basically, that's what fame is as well. And um, as your star rises, it'll rise and rise and rise and rise and get to a point where you either blow up. And I mean, I've been blessed, obviously I've had I'd say the pinnacle of my fame in this country is when out of every, say, five black people, three of them know you. Like there isn't a place that you can't, you can go to and nobody recognizes you. Sure. Um, when you're on that level of fame, which I've been on for quite some time, and it, it, it can get, it can get a bit challenging. Um, as you, as, as you might have heard, might have heard of all these other people's stories. I've handled it through, I've been a people's person for quite some time. I've been selling since me into Arnes speaking to people on a daily basis from when I was young. I would say that that has been somehow some form of training. Okay. My mother used to own a hair salon. So on weekends, I'd spend time with at my mother's hair salon. I was used to seeing different people all the time, speaking to different people as a young end. Sure. And, um, I think I attribute me even right now in the line of work that I chose, being a people's person, um, to that type of upbringing. I am multilingual. It gives me that, that edge to be able to relate to people. But yes, as a human being, there's times where you either need your space or protection, you're in crowds or... or or sometimes you're a human being. I remember at some point, Ushua <laughs> wrote an article about me. Um, That's the story. Do you know about it? You, you've told us here. The squad is. Oh, have I said it? Told the squad <laughs> the tell it again. So I'll tell you guys the story. And uh, and who snitched on me is somebody from the Muffins. <laughs> Shout out to the guys from the Muffins. I love you guys. But I think we're at the summer. Our toms are the boys. Yeah. The, you one of them actually took a picture of me in Shai 69. <laughs> and it's at the summers, bro. Like after the awards, people, everybody's like sloshed. And I was young. I used to drink. Sure. Um, I think I was sloshed as well. In Shai 69. It's Tombe. Sunday World. Two of them. Sure. How could he do that? In, 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 in. But I'm like, but 69, everybody sure. does that. So 
that instance i'm just making an example you go to anything that other people do which is normal and it's not frowned upon you can be crucified when a for 100% so mentally you wire yourself such that you never let your guard down mm. as much as you can never you can never not let your guard down 100% be alert because you moon to sometimes you chat into people sure. some and they, in america they call it lurking you get caught lurking you know um there isn't a formula i can't give you guys a formula on how you should handle it but i think just being humble and being nice to people it's really great but also there are other people who take advantage of your kindness other people bazok chaylaga other people this morning i was at the gym I never shower at the gym like I'm one of those people I train I go home I shower at home and it happens even as a 69 sure sometimes on the 69 I'm much it and then I'm it's like gents and like start to be 69 buffet <laughs> so yeah people get excited and there isn't a formula on how you handle this I think people skills knowing people never letting your guard down and also just protecting yourself because sometimes there's safety issues you might just think you don't have any enemies you're good with everybody but still your security matters as well so um the the lady this issue as well comes into play it's easier of course you know to to get women sure i've been, i've been famous for quite a you're while famous obviously. you're rich you're everywhere even even if her parents knew she was with you they would be posting that's one of the scariest of things i've seen sorry to stay yeah. busbuda specifically if you look at certain dj's if you look at certain actors on certain soapies and if you look at soccer players kabangi itaima It's time I call support Pirates, no me Chiefs, no me Sundowns. Con into an star and it time every weekend. Eli Antonio Yashisa. Yeah. And now this girl has got an opportunity to date that guy. So when she brings that guy home, it time goes. Tama, you know what I mean? It time wants to tell all his friends like saying ganya mpelisi chola no. You know? And nakona to go to ntanga mhlambe inganye yake naye bekadlulu ntanga. Sure. You know because young people do that sometimes yeah. they might not date for long sure. but it's I'm so excited with thing was I'm in in there was once a, a a a time when um at YFM I was at YFM I think I was hosting either the afternoon drive or the morning drive a lady came from the KZN and, and pretended that she was pregnant and she was adamant that it was my kid yeah she was adamant that me now i have deserted her yes she has had a one night stand with me i was in durban i was performing she was even crying she didn't want to leave at yfm luckily she came after hours and the kono mam winter um umam winter umam umdalo i said when yfm my mama wait song she was a cleaner at yfm i was so i was scared You know I was scared. In the beginning I thought she was playing. Sure. But she became so serious and she was crying and she was threatening to go to the papers and sure. all of those things. And then, you know, as nice as I could be at some point I ended up mfuna ukungala ngifuna ukumthuka but sure. before I could do that umama winter intervened and for some reason umama winter wahlala naye phansi and then what ngimnike zishansi. I must just go away or whatever I was i think in the studio or something yeah. and then she called me a couple of minutes later 30 minutes later and next to her and then she um confessed ukuthi bayahlupheka ekhaya yar she had sat down with her, her mother got her into this the case at end and then they targeted me vele ukuthi she's going to come and they'll create the story and vele vele that was the plan with me le bang thuse ngoshwashu for those who don't know guys shwashu was big at the time as a gossip column that used to be um very big in the country and that have gossip stories every week and we used to be concerned about our reputation so sometimes when you go to you are going to show you i impregnated this lady i don't know this but you know what i mean so they threatened me or show you well she said they were going to threaten uh, they were going to threaten me or show you so that i was going to have to give her money yeah i need to tell the story I just wanted to check if it was on the internet so that I don't make it bigger than it was. Oh yeah. So there's a lady on Facebook uh who posted just to finish off the story sure, sure. guys. Howdy, howdy, she ended up confessing and you know it didn't go in. I'm just making you that's one of the examples. Sometimes those are some of the situations that we get to deal with. Other people make stories up, you know? Just like you've heard with some of your favorite celebrities of um being accused of 1 2 3 and for sometimes it's not true. Sometimes we don't know it's probably true and we don't know. But I mean I think I've been one of those people who had chosen to be when i'm dating somebody i'm dating somebody you know i wasn't like 
crazy piece na mando mazana long na long na long but the young as i was yes i mean i loved i loved sisters i loved ladies but i was more of a relationships sure. type of a guy sure. so even na manje till today i'm more to munto mando mazana sure yeah but so nipa i show them the love that they they deserve at arm's length sure. i try and make sure what's ang tatan na my phone number i'm calling them i'm dming i'm what what cuz anything can happen they can screenshot that put it on social media anything can happen there's, you never know and you've got a lot to lose at my level right now you're affiliated with a lot of big things you know there's a there's a line that says nothing is ever off the record nothing is ever off the record so we're on camera now but a, as a piece of advice for any of you who are looking to get into certain spaces you could be a business mogul you could be a big politician you could be big ekaslako be careful who you are around and what you're speaking about and try and have this mindset of nothing is ever off the record what that means is who justice can switch off these cameras but maybe they're not switched off or maybe my voice recorder is on yes. and usbuda starts dropping certain files here can yes. i'm malicious and next thing i'm sending these things somewhere so just try and carry yourself with the type of integrity where even if something leaks you can kind of stand for that thing i wanted to say this so i spoke earlier about how Denzel Washington says when you're at your peak that's when the devil comes for you. For some people there are human angels and I think Umam Winter was that for you. Yes. Where the devil was coming for Usbuda and then an angel came in and intervened. There's a story that was shared by Chris Excel very popular on on Twitter and I hate the fact that he uses Bianca Costa's picture to this day. Bianca Costa is a young lady I know that I used to mentor when she got to Joburg. She's from Eswatini, a very beautiful, very intelligent young lady. And who Chris Excel to this day still kind of uses her picture falsely. But we think it's a lady, Utsego Goldie, who who posted young stunner rate me y'all. Huh. And then later on in the comments she writes, I'm joking y'all. Oh. So so I want to say this, right? Cuz I want I want to say this first and foremost We must now go make the mistake of rushing to and find this Tejo Goldie's account and then cyber bullying that person because then we become part of the problem. That person's mental health might collapse, they might get depressed. So don't go attack that person. But there's a lesson here for almost all of us. And part of the lesson is be very careful because social media has shown us that a nobody, a nobody can go on Twitter and say who oh, black pen raped me. Nobody don't even have to have a profile picture and that will trend. And even people that don't know me, people that don't know the person that posted, they will always hold you to that thing and it destroys your career. Don't do that. Number 1. Number 2, for those who see these stories, please don't rush and jump to destroy someone's career. Take a step back and don't become part of the mob that destroys a person's life and mental health. And then lastly remember this on social media they aren't neighborhoods angeke kusho ukuthi hayi la Twitter ngwe neighborhood yabo sibuda so kumele ngidlule kumele ngicela isecurity ingenise la kwi Facebook yama celebrity any kind of mentally disturbed person any type of hater anyone who's destructive anyone who's a serial rapist a serial killer people that are fraudsters um people that are just not well in their heads can create an account use other people's pictures use whatever name they want and go out there to try and destroy someone's life anyone can do that hopefully in time all of our accounts will be verified and you'll need to be a real person before you get on social media so that we know exactly who posted what but for now guys just be very very careful of what you consume like i said who chris excel is very popular on twitter but the reality is that's not even his face That's a lady Bianca Costa. She's got a huge Instagram account. Beautiful lady. I've visited her home. I've met her parents. I've I've met her siblings. No, I met her. I went to visit her family. I met her father. I was friends with her mom, her nice. brother, her sister. So it's sad to see things like that. And a Chris Excel as a nobody can drop any file but without being verified that destroys someone's life. Before you even continue, how does she feel? She hates it. She says she's tried to report the account many times. and some of her friends have tried to report the account and nothing so chris Ex- chris excel knows that she does bianca doesn't like it. yes him using the the picture yes ah come on chris excel bro
I'd like to think I've got a good relationship with Chris Excel from the days of when I was still on Twitter. If you're watching this, or just guys cut up this clip and send it to Chris sure. Excel. As a hot maniaco, Chris Excel, um, if the lady doesn't like you using her profile pic, I know she's pretty, she's amazing. Um, but when Peniel is saying what he's saying about how she feels, I think maybe it's time to use somebody else's picture. Or maybe just Vail. Like, you know? Use another picture. I think Vail, like, use your picture. Use an avatar. Post a picture of a unicorn. And I'd love to see how Chris Axel looks like. Ah. What do you mean, ah? No, I'm just saying, no, I'm not saying hi to that. Oh, okay. I'm just saying it's a it's a it's a sad thing. And hopefully with Abo Elon Musk and these guys trying to verify accounts, some of those things are gonna go away. I wanted to ask you, because I spoke for a really long time. I wanted yeah. to ask you, um, so maybe we're not gonna cover Tabo Pesta, or maybe you will after I've left. It's up to you. No, but let me say go to Kodamanje. Thank you very much, guys. Now I know. Yo. Sure. Yo. The, the story has layer upon Yo. layer, skaka upon skaka. That's a movie, bro. As Musa Kaula would say. <laughs> That's a movie. At bro. least Musa Kaula has come out. We know what he looks like. If he bashes someone, Musa Siabo on face, at least we see you now. Not hiding behind some accounts, even though it's content for me. It's a no from me. But yeah, for some people, I guess he appeals. My question, which I think I may have asked before, but if I didn't, I know I wanted to ask. How much work you have to do in staying true to yourself when you become very famous because you spoke earlier about you become famous and all these things and all this noise and you're like luckily you were trained as into one now for a normal kid out there who maybe wasn't about wasn't in the streets it's just a kid who ended up blowing up and like now everyone in the streets Aries like says Aries. That. that's why he says it doesn't do a lot of interviews yeah. because he's a very reserved person sure. and then he says he, he's crying out space is the booth sure. where he just looks at that mic and then he just pours it all sure. out pro used to be like that but over time because i guess pro he sort of got used to this fame thing but what i love about pro was the humility may so rest in peace i think a lot of people that meet pro that be shocked to go to god these rhymes are coming from such a humble guy sure. and when you meet him it's like a totally i remember meeting person. him very quiet i was like sure and it's like i was chile i was chile i was Sorry, finish off the question. Uh, the amount of work you have to put in to keep yourself, maybe don't speak about yourself because maybe you're, you're different, but from what you've seen, fighting, getting sucked into this matrix of chasing clout, wanting to dress a certain way, wanting to sound a certain way, wanting to be seen with certain girls. Now you're too cool for your family. You're too cool for your friends. But I mean, I'm a big star. How much work do you have to put in to stay true to yourself and not get sucked in to a point where you don't have, you have to say thank you and, and no thank you to certain spaces and certain people just so you don't lose yourself? I think if you believe in God, you must be rooted in that. When I say rooted in that, that um, trickles down to the type of values you are brought up um, by principles. From Eka again, La Pupuma Corner. If you are rooted, if you are more rooted in that, then it centers you. When it centers you, you know what's a no, you know what's a yes for you. You know spaces you can engage in and go to and appear in or type, type the type of people you can associate with or people you can be friends with. Although some people over time, you might never know their true intentions, but it's easier for, for you to sort of navigate spaces when you really know yourself. That's why I always say to people, just work on yourself. And, you know, um, stay true to that belief system that you are brought up under wherever you come from. If it goes, it goes, if but that sort of does help quite a lot because the industry will bring in a lot of friends. A lot of them are just an entourage. A lot of them have got their own personal agendas or a lot of them just want to be around you because when they're around you, it's easier for them to either maybe get into places for free or it's easier for them maybe to get men or to get girls or it's easier for them to do certain things just because they are affiliated with you. So it's very important for you to guard your space and other people will also sometimes say yeah but who do you how do you know if the people that are next to you are real or how do you know if you get to be involved with a girl she's really for you or she's coming for the money or for the fame trust me when you know yourself and you're centered um it's easy to see because there's many others like her or there's many others like him so you are very it's very easy to distinguish but it but it might not be quick it might take a bit of time, but there will be certain things that are signs that you might not, you might, you might not say a lot. Red flags. But you, um, you are sort of, um, you know, you are looking. 
Now, I mean, I mean, I've been in, in some spots where I'm trying to get into circles of very wealthy people, you know, for relationship purposes or sometimes it's not selfish. You can find something global. And I've been always trained and I was taught to Guti, if you're trying to get into that type of a space, rather come to that person and add value. 100%. And be respectful and also know your boundaries. Yes, and know when to step back and let the person yeah, be. Yeah, and let them be. 100%. Because sometimes, for instance, you want somebody to be your mentor. Um, there's a way in how you do that. You offer value into what they're doing. I called Peniel here. He didn't, he didn't ask to be here. But even when I called him here, he's the one who's always insisted that he wants to add value. And he, he never asked for a single cent. And he didn't only just verbally say that he, he, by action, he showed that and he's still doing it till even now. He doesn't have to be here anymore. You know what I mean? Like he can, he's flying. He's doing very well on his own, but he's still here. He feels Uguti, our relationship, probably, I don't know how he feels, but the fact that our relationship is grown to be where it is a year later, I'm very grateful to have earned another brother at this stage in my life where it's not easy to make friends at that stage, at this stage, like from your 40s upwards. That's why you see a lot of a lot of older people They don't take nonsense. Sure. A, lo a lot of older people are, they are... Um, Short fuse, Baba. They, yeah. They man. very know, yes, no. Yeah, like, you know. I'm not, I don't have time to entertain. And now I've gotten into that space now. Yeah. And, and in the beginning, you'll hear songs like, no new friends, no new friends, no, no, no. And be like, what type of a human being? Like, <laughs> no new friends. We meet people every day. You make yeah. friends. There's a reason why people like on Drake's level will say such things. It's because of, you know, some of the things that we're saying now. So, yeah, li life is like that. As you grow, work more on yourself. Be centered in, in, in your belief system. Then it'll be sort of easier for you to see people who are aligned with what you represent and those who are not aligned with what you represent. And for those who are coming in for... um for for certain agendas it's yeah. going to be easier for you to uh, just this is busy looking <laughs> even penuel is busy <laughs> coming the, the, the devil is here <laughs> 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 because sometimes the devil baba is beautiful it's not the devil it's not the devil no no school is a beautiful it's a distraction sometimes the distraction comes wrapped in a very juicy booty <laughs> And a very yellow soft hey, she's hot, tender. She's hot. She's hot. Hey, in cut your face. 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 And that's what I love about God, man. He created us to be attracted to all you sisters. We love you guys. We love you so much. But guys, be centered in yourselves and work on yourselves, you know. And if you don't have any belief system, I think the more you focus on personal development and you becoming a better person mentally, you will be better and it'll be easier for you to sort of make certain judgments, you know, and be a good judge of character because you don't need everybody to be around you. You must notice it. It's a pattern even in the entertainment industry. When entertainers are young or athletes or famous people, presenters or actors, they always have a lot of people around them. The older they get, there's less and less people around them. Yeah. It's because it, it's, and, and it's something that will forever happen. Sure. Even the new guys who are becoming famous now, or those of you who are going to become famous, you'll realize that. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, there's just that excitement. Sometimes you're just good hearted. You just want to bring everybody along. But it gets to a point where, yes, some other people will take advantage of you. You're always paying the bill. You're always just the person who's getting people into venues. You're always, you know, people want to always come visit your home. And so rather be private, rather keep certain people at arm's length rather know who are your go-to people and with that being said also let me just go to the story saga Don design aka's friend i've just seen some um reports that aka's killers have been arrested and apparently they were arrested through a a time slip now oh, we i didn't know that so so i spoke earlier about the guys that have been arrested and i said something was pretty sweet i don't know if you heard the news when we record this but there was a car that was found in Durban with fingerprints, the parent getaway car. And some of these guys had the fingerprints which tracked. So I, I didn't hear the airtime slip story. You'll tell us that one. They were arrested. Five guys were the suspects. Uh, I'll say the bitter part of the story if you don't touch on it because I mentioned it to the squatters earlier. Please speak about the airtime slip. Now, out of those five people, none of them was the people that a lot of people were accusing. And specifically... Um, 
I, you know, I understand. I understand. A lot of us were mad. A lot of us were shocked. A lot of us were, you know, heartbroken. And you know, a lot of people started naming suspects, including Nota, sure. who is a dear friend of our, our 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 platforms and a brother to us. Um, what happens now that these five people, as they are arrested like this, about Don Design, have got nothing to do with that murder? What happens now when a person like Don Design is walking around with that stamp of, yeah, you were involved in 2123, you were involved in 2123? Sure. Just because now we did exactly what you were talking about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. We just went and bullied sure. that person. We went and named him names. Same things happened to Longwe Twala and Kelly Kumalo with the Senzo Mayo. Yeah. To this day. And even if they ever get their names cleared legally in people's heads, they'll always somehow be that thing. I know it very well. So, yeah, that's that's why I'll transition to Histori Histori Siga 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 Don Nuguti. If it was somebody else who was probably involved in that murder, for some reason, it's said that AKA, and I wouldn't say he didn't have a good judge of character. It said that he might have missed that that part of a Judas Iscariot betraying sure. him one day. Um, but if it's the other way around, it's said for people like Abu Don Design, sure. because the whole country went and attacked these people, mm -hmm. and their lives were in danger, sure. including Ko as well. Yeah, where including Ko's brother. When and that, and that was that was what I was trying to say to Nota in that one episode on the Hustlers Corner where I ended up just deciding to keep quiet where I was saying... <laughs> I remember that episode. <laughs> who, AKA, who, who, who AKA complained about being crucified by the media and everyone as being involved in the killing of Anele Tembe, his fiance, And he said that was unfair and he was being chastised by the public. And then to then turn around and do the same thing in his passing to now go and chastise other people is almost hypocritical if you're saying you stand in solidarity with AKA, who had said, guys, don't do this. Don't when I get accused of things and you don't know, blast me. And then when he dies, other people now go and do the exact same thing with some of his friends without really having any tangible evidence. Because if there was tangible evidence, it's fine, but it's speculation. We don't know. Oh. The, the bitter part, which I mentioned earlier, which yeah. I don't know if you'd seen the news. Of the five guys, there's one I'm not sure of. One is in custody. Three have been released. Three have been released. And I wanted you to, to speak about your thoughts around, again, our legal justice system, our police, our South African police, were mixing it with Tabo Pesta and what's happened, and the fact that these guys were found, but now they've been released, and we don't know what's going to happen. Because now, to what you were trying to say about clearing people's names, those names get thrown back in now. Which are, these guys were cleared, so let's go back. Some people are saying, but it was women that shot to AKA based on the footage. You're like, yo, hey, Inzi, my lento about fate. Because maybe we can speculate a gender. We can speculate a facial. Once we start saying it was that person, but there's no explicit concrete, concrete without beyond reasonable doubt. You're now literally becoming part of a mob that's throwing yeah. stones at a person. If he cherry comes and says, this is his child. He doesn't want to pay child support. Someone says, we young stand of fuck, poor guy. Again, up and coming, not even up and coming, young stunners at the peak of where, in a short space of time, people now throwing, and now we come and we throw stones at funny things. Tomorrow, a girl says, I was joking, y'all. Emoji, emoji. You threw stones. We don't know what happened to WHP, Ricky Rick, and their mental states that led to the decisions they made. But me, Spuda, Mchasto, one of you, there was a tweet, there was a like, there was a retweet. There were laughing emojis that if we're going to build a case that it takes a mountain to collapse your mind, some of those rocks were from some of us. And we don't know. Because And then the person's mind crashes because we're not the same. So one of the reasons why I've been saying over the past year that it's been a bit of a break to not be on Twitter sure. over the past year or so. But at the same time, as much as I miss it for my own reasons, you know, to promote our work. Sure. But uh, for some reason, it's just been, um, I guess that's why I haven't been that informed, guys. I know I've, su I've seen some comments who are saying, how does Spoo come to an episode <laughs> not being, <laughs> you know, it's because I'm not on Twitter. The other thing is, guys, CPs, you know, I wanted to add two things to what you said earlier. 
about how to protect yourself from being sucked into the social media you're, world. You're the first person at home to leave degree or hambang and Mercedes. Now you're too cool. Be centered, be self-aware. I wanted to add, uh, get mentors, get wise mentors that have walked the journey similar to yours so that they can guide you and don't pay unnecessary school fees and make unnecessary mistakes. Number two, always focus on the work. Always focus on the work. Beyonce Knowles still wakes up every morning. She goes to vocal training. She goes to gym. She goes to choreography training. LeBron James became a superstar in school. When he joined the NBA, he kept going harder. When he started winning his rings, he went harder. When he broke some of Michael Jordan's records, he kept going. He's broken um, Jabbar. He broke the record for the most points in the NBA. The guy still wakes up in the morning as a dollar billionaire and still hits the gym and still shoots hoops. So, one of the things that's going to make you lose your way is when you stop focusing on the work. Don't ever stop focusing on the work. Trevor Noah, Kevin Hart, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. When you listen to those guys, when you look at how they work, as big as they are, they still work. Don't, the work is the one thing you'll never lose. Because even after the fame goes, even after the girls go, even after your family starts laughing at you, even if you start getting dragged on social media as Munto Uile, the one thing besides your God and your belief system that you must never lose is your work. LeBron James can be, can be cancelled. He's no longer in the NBA. He's lost his money like Kanye West. Yeah, he's been shut down. He doesn't have social media. They've repossessed his... But as long as there's a basketball court somewhere in a basketball, Undanga will still wake up every single morning, Bob, and hit the gym, hit suicides, hit push-ups, and shoot hoops because that's his sanctuary. That's his religion. So fall in love with the work and make work your, your, your religion. That's why I'm podcasting. That's why we even went to go start our own online radio station. Because as much as you're on radio, it's easier also for people to like, yeah, but you've got a lot going on for you. Mm, other things that maybe people can, you know, sometime I've been on. Back to IFM, Metro FM, Massive Metro. Now I'm online podcasting. Radio. Online radio and I'm oiling it, you know? And when I'm not, I watch you, like what you're doing. You're on your platforms. You are you are sharing videos. You're sharing knowledge. You started your own platform. You're putting out content there. You, you, are, oil, you are doing the work and it doesn't stop. Like my timer before you pass on, they saw rest in peace. He said to me, nobody arrives. Sure. Nobody arrives. Sure. You have to consistent. Yes, as you get older or maybe as you get more successful, you'll obviously delegate a lot of things because now you can afford to pay certain certain people for services. But still, that passion and that burning desire within you, it shouldn't end and it shouldn't stop. You should always, maybe you can sort of start working smarter. Yeah. But the passion doesn't stop. Yeah. Um, the fact that we don't make money out of these things, we'll make a little bit, it's not a lot. But it doesn't stop us from coming here. And recording over and over consistently every week for the whole year, for another year, for another year. Yeah. The Hustlers Corner is going now for, it started 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23. Going on four years now. Nah. We don't Next stop. year, half a decade, boy. We don't stop. Yeah. We don't stop. I'm a radio person. So when I've evolved to podcasting, it's still the same thing. It's broadcasting, it's media, just that it's digital. Yeah. But it just does not stop. It doesn't stop. And other people, I mean, I, I made I made an example the other time. Oh, I made a statement the other time and I was like, I went back to check out my name and so many companies that were not, that are not trading. Yeah, yeah, at the CIPC with my names on. A lot of them have failed. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. I failed in them. Yeah. But I never stopped. And a lot of those things, guys, you don't know about. But as I'll, I'll always say that it takes one to succeed. 100%. But even that one has succeeded and you feel like it's doing well. There's no stopping. You haven't arrived, as his timer said. You, you, no one you, arrived. You build, you keep building. I always, I wrote something in a couple of days ago, even on my socials on, on Facebook. And I said, build now, shine later. Yeah. Other people attacked me. They're like, no, we want to shine now. <laughs> I'm like, Shema. And I understand probably a lot of them are still young guys. They don't Inst understand. Instant gratification versus delayed gratification. The, the shine comes later. Keep building. And I always say the future is created by what you do now. Yeah. It's not going to be like, I'll see it when I'm 35. Yeah. I'll see it when I'm 30. See it now because the results of when you're 30 are, are, are created by what you're doing now. For me, I always now, which is, you know, I've been, I've, I've been reading some books that have been, uh, but in, um, 
um, but in inspiring me to start living in the present yeah. and focusing on now. 100%. And when you start seeing things like other brothers passing on, and I'm not saying with any one of us is going to die, guys, but you got to keep going, creating the content, doing the work, building whatever you're building, building your career, studying those books. For some of you guys who are pushing your degrees, you got to keep... Guys, you've seen even people like Abu Tabombek, presidential state. Yeah. They're still reading books till today. They yes. read books as thick as this. Or Jacob Zuma still being appointed to be heads of certain committees and groups. They not... Dr. Richard Maponya, may he rest in peace. When he was interviewed, I think he was 92 or something at the time. And they're like, when are you going to retire? He says, I'm never going to retire. You guys will have to put me in a coffin. Still, I was actually chatting to Tutuzane Zuma, uh, presidential candidate for 2024 and the son of ex-president Jacob Zuma. And he's like, hey, Itai Malami still got fire. Still got fire. I want... Uh, I have to go and fetch. Uh, I have to go and fetch into Anayamu Unyanga Uskupu. So Zongkalinjela Usbuda is gonna is gonna take you guys home. But I just wanna say a, a few things before I leave. Number one, Tutuzane Zuma said one of the pieces of advice that his father gave him was, at all times, not not literal but metaphoric or figurative, always have a shield and a spear, because in life you'll always be fighting. And his father's told him, I've always been fighting my whole life. So always have a shield to guard yourself. Whatever that shield may be, it could be God, it could be your mother, it could be going home, it could be taking time off social media and always have a spear. Your spear is what you attack other people with, not necessarily to hurt them. It could be your gift. It could be you attack them with your brilliant music, you attack them with your brilliant knowledge, um, your academic prowess, your business skills, your products, your services, etc. So... Always have a shield and always have a spear in life because you're constantly at war. And that's shout out to ex-president to Jacob Zuma. I want to say congrats again. I know we said it in the last episode to all the new kids on the block and all the guys going to new spaces in the new radio season that has started beginning of April. I saw more flavors going to be on 94.7, I think. Uh, we spoke about Ankle Tap. We spoke about Nia Brown. Uh, and... Candice, Candice Kardashian. Yeah. You know, all the other guys we didn't mention, unfortunately, who are new on radio, who are coming to place the trail. I gave shout outs to Uma Play, uh, Wasanga Mayhem, Melody Mia, Mansui Pout, Tando Taburi. Gee, all the people that I know, and I'm not even an anybody in life. Congrats to all of you guys. Please keep going. Please keep building. Enjoy the new season. And please don't forget to mentor the kids. Don't forget to bring people up. Part of what will be your greatness, especially as in Huyabantabamnyama, is how many people you manage to lift, lift up as you are rising. Those people are going to keep your legacy alive long after you're gone. And then the last two things is firstly, I'd like to say happy belated birthday to my son, Ushaga. Ah. Uh, he turned six years old. Ah, that's uh, great. I love you very much, boy. I'm hoping to come and visit you guys with your sister, Ukalchi, in Durban soon. Thank you very much to his mom, his aunt, his grand, who are doing the most, you know, in terms of raising those kids. Minanya, Ficharisha, where I can. But I love you guys very much and happy belated birthday, boy. And then Nkunz Malang, his, his eldest brother and my firstborn, Nkunz Imlochwa, who's with his sister in China, won a trophy for having the best monologue amongst a couple of schools where in their province where they are in China. Uh, Nkunzi, I'm looking at the work you're doing. I know you and your mom and your sister love watching our podcasts. You remember DJ Spoo sent you like a, a voice note on Skype. Um, I love you. I'm, I'm enjoying watching you rise, becoming braver. Remember that when I'm not around, you're the man of the house. You know, my father used to tell me that. So look after your mom, look after your sister. But for the achievements that I've seen you achieve already, I mean, people maybe don't even know when you start shining, you're going to be telling them, but guys, I had a movie with Otineo Ranaka when I was a kid, Baby Mamas on Netflix. When people see your sister, Africa Rising, she'd be like, when I was a baby, I was on in all the jet stores around, around the country. So you guys have been at it. Shout out to your mom in China. You know, shout out to everyone in the support structure. My mom, my siblings, you guys now have met Penson, thanks to Usbuda. Um, my sister, all the mothers of my kids and all their relatives who add to helping us. Shout out to the soil. I saw the Hustlers Corner where Brian O'Hayes, Brian O'Hayes did a video to Dr. Sipos Tole for the soil, Korobela, where Africa was one of the stars there. So it's weird how the world works. Steve Jobs said we can only connect the dots backwards. But Nkunz Malang, I just want you to know officially on the platform, 
I love you very much. I'm proud of you. I'm looking forward to you and your sister coming back and for us doing a whole lot more amazing work together. Before he runs out quickly, three things. Quickly, before you run out, first thing I'd like to say, I saw some people speaking about nepotism. This is not the government. Peñol has to put his brother on. That is his responsibility. That's his brother. He has to put him on. So I saw some people saying, yes, he has to. <laughs> Ice Cube once said, Vele, Vele, my son has to get a, a, but in, a, a, an acting role. What is that movie again? Strictly? What is it? The Compton? Uh, the NWA straight movie. Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton, right? Niggas with attitude, boy. Yeah. NWA, straight I, out of Compton. I worked so hard such that it's easier for my son to feature in movies or it's easier for him to get an acting career. Yes. And unless if you are in government, you are in uh, spaces where I kind of feel it's, you, you, you have to think twice about um, such things. You're in a leadership position. There are policies and, and procedures. That's why it's a problem in government. Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, whenever you can, wherever you can, if you're working hard and you can be able to put on your family, put them on. And still on that first issue, happy belated birthday um, to, your, to your kid. But I also want to say that... Um, oh, man. Smooda. I wanted to say this. With nepotism... Even if it's government with policies, make sure that whoever you're bringing on, you let them know what you have to perform. Upensi knows there, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's a, that's an economics 101 term. As much as Usbuda is putting him on, as much as I'm putting him on, he needs to put in work. And he's making videos. He's just hit a thousand subscribers and he was celebrating on YouTube. One thousand. Put in the work and then we'll pull you up. I would never put my, I would never, me, put my brother on if I didn't think he was willing to put in the work. I might feature him being a but you must put in the work. Otherwise, it's not me. The people out there are going to tell you, but this guy is whack. It won't be us trying to force that. You guys will be like, so shout out to Penson and shout out to, they call it nepotism. We call it Ubuntu. We call it Umdeni. And importantly for Ubuntu, Umdeni, you can't exercise Ubuntu. You can't uplift Umdeni if Umdeni don't have Ubuntu. And they're not willing to put in the work. Because when they come in, they must look, make you look even better. And the last point, because I forgot, I, I got a bit absent-minded here. But it's fine, I'll remember it later. Maybe after you go and I'll, I'll tell the viewers. The last point, finally I got myself, I, I gave myself a chance to check out your interview with Uvusi Tembewai. That's hey. one of the things I wanted to speak about today, just that I came in late. And I got a chance to watch your episode, Nosis Mandi Sabasheko. Brilliant, great episode. And I wanted to give you props on that. Thank I you. think if you go um, in that direction, you keep doing the work. The sky is the limit. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of the work that you're doing with the Penuel Show. I'm just so proud of um, the direction at which you are taking that platform. I'm so proud of the consistent work that you're putting on on the Penuel, the Black Pen YouTube channel. And you must just keep going. And that's 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 the the one point that I just wanted to contribute before you leave. I think maybe on next week's episode, I'll have a thorough um, breakdown of what I think uh, of the issues that were discussed on your on the on those two particular episodes because yeah. this week I gave myself a chance to watch all of them. The Vusi Tembawai episode, uh, uh, episode and the um, Sismandi Samashiko episode. Um, big up to that and congratulations. Puts, that puts so I want to I wanna say this. I, I've said this in many videos. You guys have heard. I decided November, I think 2021 that I'm going to start consistently putting in work. DJ Spoo had already noticed me. I've said before, he's got this unique thing that I normally see in Jewish business people. He's got this unique thing of identifying talent and putting it on. You know, he's had many people on his platform, some that you don't know, Oba Pusha, or Kanyisa, Chakteni. People that some people may not know, he puts them on because he's got an eye for talent. Even with TS Records and all those days. So thank you to Spoo for seeing me before you guys even knew me and putting me on. I'd already made a decision to put in work. Spu put me on, he elevated me. I remembered, put in work. We got an opportunity to sit with Saul Penduga and, and MacGyver, and they invited me to Podcast and Chill, the biggest platform on the continent. That elevated me, but I remembered to put in work. Myself and Utibu Khokibine had been speaking since the riots about creating a podcast. He was like, now it's time. He just got a new production offices, and he was like, my man, we've got a space now. Let's do this thing. I was like, hey, okay, let's push. And we launched the panel show, and I put in work. The Vusi Tembewayo interview, some of the people I've met, some of the people you've associated me with, 
it's done the most views for me sitting down with someone over half a million. And I'm very thankful to some of the squatters, some of the hustlers that have been watching us for a while for supporting that and sharing that. But I need you to understand that DJ Spoo, Podcast and Chill with Mac G, uh, Pedal Show, uh, Vusi Tembeguayo, whoever else I'm going to sit with, wherever I get to travel, whoever I get to meet, I am blessed, I am humbled, I am inspired, and you know, I, I don't take any of this for granted. But at the back of my head, I know we take Baba, but we have to work. We have to work. So I, I, I acknowledge it. Eric Thomas, in one of his greatest motivational clips, spoke about a guy who just won the Super Bowl in, in football, American football. And in that advert, he was quoting or saying, this guy was at the gym saying, I've just won the Super Bowl. So I think I can rest now. So he's, he's lifting weights, bench, bench pressing, I think. Bench pressing, he, he locks and he's like, I've just won the Super Bowl. So I think I can rest now. So then the guy rests for like five seconds. And after those five seconds, he goes back to pushing the weights. Or see how see after they won the Rugby World Cup. You can imagine they did the tours and the watch out for a week, for a month. And then wh where were they after that? They were busy with the World Cup. No, they were back in the gym, back on the field. Black Coffee wins a Grammy. What does he do after, after that night? Goes back into the studio. So one of the mindsets I'm on, one of the mindsets you need to be on is appreciate whatever successes you have, whatever they may be. Have a GPS coordinates you're trying to get to. Not that you're going to rest when you get there. You know, Akon said when he was in jail about to get out that he wanted to work with Michael Jackson, I think in about five to 10 years and it happened much sooner. But he carried on with his vision. So at all times, I'm humbled I'm thankful to Uputusbu here, but I always know that I must constantly keep working and never rest on my laurels. And I hope it's a message to some of you guys. Don't stop working. You'll meet people. You become successful. You make some money, buy a nice car. You meet some great... Keep working and keep pushing yourself. One of my guiding stars in working is a gentleman by the name of Leonardo da Vinci. If you ever get a chance, I don't even know if the car was real. I don't know if Leonardo da Vinci was named after an, after an institution. Go and look at all the artworks he did, the paintings, the drawings, the sculptures. Go and look at all the inventions he did. If you can, read up on all the stories that he wrote. If you look at someone like a Mozart, if you look at what Kanye West has achieved in his life, if you look at from age 21 to 25 when he was killed, how much work Tupac Shakur Tupac, yeah. got in. If you look at Kevin Hart and The Rock, if you look at the work ethics of Trevor Noah, Beyonce Knowles, it's almost like we're wasting time. That's why we have to keep working because we don't know when things will, we, we won't have the privileges. So we'll work. And when you switch from Hustlers Corner, but we know we're serving a higher purpose and we're hoping we inspire you guys to rise up and push for a higher purpose as well. We love you guys very much. I think you all do scoop before that little two-year-old nigger gets angry at me. And let, scoop me remind you once again. let me remind you once again, when I was overseas, I wasn't asked about anybody on South African television. I was not asked about SABC presenters or anybody on television. I was asked about Nota and Peño more than once, more than two times, more than three times. This is overseas a few months ago as I was in the US. That's when in my mind, I was like, oh... We're global. We're global. We've got a lot of work to do. Because if they can recognize us for now, when we still have not stretched the surface yet, imagine when our platforms at least start getting into a million subscribers. Oh, guys, each. we're still playing games, eh? Do you know what I mean? MacGyver, by the way, congratulations, guys. Road to a million. Go to podcast and chill. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed there. Let's help them get to a million. And if you're just like myself and Peniel, you're one of those people who don't mind and you can't afford to become a paying member and help them continue to give you guys great content and also contribute in becoming one of their million subscribers that they're about to reach in the next few weeks. That's but nice. congratulations to them for reaching 900,000 subscribers. So for me, I was like, wow, we are global. This is nothing. I want when I, when the next time I come with Peniel here, we've got our own situation and people are packed yeah. coming for us. Because we don't have to wait to be called by some news channel or by some opportunity overseas in the, in the, in Nigeria or in the US or in Europe. We can do it from home because anybody, any one of you guys that's already online, the fact that you are watching us here, we're already global.
Thank We're you. global. That's what I wanted Lastly, to say. Lastly, sorry, I mentioned Dunkunzi no Africa in China. I mentioned Ushaga no culture in Durban. I'm going to Fetchus Kupu now. Zulu Khosim Locho, who's in Newcastle. I know we're being kept apart by forces. Maybe, maybe it's going to be a blessing in disguise later. Maybe I'm being challenged. Maybe you're being challenged. But I know at some point, when I am, you're turning 10 in May. I know at some point we're going to reunite and I can't wait. I can't wait for the amazing work we're going to be doing together and how you and your siblings are going to completely fuck shit up. I love you, boy. And I hope anyone who has proximity to my boy, Uzulu, in Newcastle, let him know. And when you're ready and when you have the opportunity, you guys will reunite and do amazing things together with your siblings and the rest of your family members. Let me be out. Love you, bro. Thank you Take so much. Care. Pass my regards to the fam. We're out. All right. Well, I'm out. Uh, I'm wrapping it up. Um, I just wanted to say, guys, in wrapping it up, don't sleep on yourself. Guys, this is life. It happens once. You only have one chance. A lot of you guys are scared for whatever reason. You're scared of what people are going to say. You're scared if you're going to fail. You're scared if you're going to... It doesn't matter. Just do it anyways because you'll never find out. You don't want to be those people that say, I would have, I could have, I should have, I wish I could have. I wish I should have. Don't know how to... Don't Thank you. You have to do it now. Only now you've got the time. We don't know about tomorrow. It's not guaranteed. Do it now. Whatever you are resting on in your mind that you're postponing till next year, January, that you're postponing till December, that you're postponing till June, that you're postponing to next week, do it now. I say to you, do it now. Now is the time. There isn't any other time. And don't wait to be better. Don't wait to get an, get an opportunity. Don't wait to be cold. Don't wait. Create it yourself. I didn't just meet Peniel sitting somewhere, he was already putting in work. And as you put in work, that's where they find you. As you're corrupting there, wherever you work as a cleaner, wherever you work as a security guard, wherever you work as a, a petrol attendant, wherever you work as an intern, that's where the next opportunity is going to find you. It's not going to find you sitting down. You got to be doing something. Even if that something is not giving you much money, just go there because you never know. That opportunity is probably going to, going to introduce Introduce you to some incredible bigger opportunities or to some amazing people. I used to sell in the streets. Yes, I used to sell in the streets. Ninto na se kasi bengi paise strati, bengi paise karoeni, bengi paise skela, bengi paise latin business paza, bengi paise chose. I always joke and I always put it in my books and I say, the reason why when you go to a lot of buildings right now in Johannesburg and they're written, the no hawkers sign is because of me. Because I used to come in there and hustle them. I used to sell toys, calculators, shaving machines, clothes. I used to sell anything that I could get my hands on. And I used to hustle and work. And every time I'd meet some incredible people, would say, Ndwana, you've got a great attitude. Ndwana, you speak well. Ndwana, we love your confidence. Ndwana, you are going far. They used to say that. I never used to forget all of those compliments that I used to get. And in my mind, I used to tell myself, so many people can't be saying all these positive things about me. And I'm, and I'm just sitting on myself and I'm sleeping on myself. No, I put in even more work to eventually get into the entertainment business. When I got in, I never stopped. I became a great DJ in this country. I became a great musician in this. I became a record exec at a young age. There's not a lot of people who have executive produced and help other people's careers become successful. I did that. I became to, I went to the high excellence of South African television, the high excellence of um, being a best-selling author in this country, uh, being a, a public speaker, now international speaker, international DJ. Now we're podcasting. I didn't just stop at radio. We're podcasting. We're building our podcasts. We're building our platforms. We're not stop. You can't stop. Even for all of you guys that are driving, driving on my G63s, but have got good positions. You guys are CEOs. You guys have got beautiful homes. We don't stop. Nobody arrives. And remember, you're paying bond to that house. It's still not your house. It's the bank's house. We don't stop. Even that car is not yours. Even if you've got three, three of them, they're not fully paid off. They're not yours. So you don't own them. So you have to keep on putting in the work. I think for me, that's where I want to leave it. I want to leave it by encouraging you guys to go out there and be the best you you can be. Forget the noise. People will always talk, man. People criticized us when we started Mo Fire. We wouldn't be where we are today if we had listened to people. Just last year, when we were starting pushing Peniel, a lot of people were criticizing, who's this guy? No, we don't like this guy. Right now, a lot of people are falling in love with his content. He's amazing. And he's not stopping. He's going. 
Right now, we are pushing real estate and property and that's the business that I'm in. I'm not stopping. There is no stopping here. Nobody arrives. There is nobody who arrives. I'm wearing overalls. I've got my backpack with me. I'm putting in the work. I don't stop and I don't have any excuses. Yeah, because it was raining. Yeah, because my mother this and that. Yeah, because the government this. Yeah, because on social media. Because you are listening to a lot of voices. Nothing should stop you. Forget about what people are going to say. I said the other day on my Facebook, act, they will react. Your job is to put in the, the work. Their job is to criticize. Let us all do our job. Thank you, sir. Mic drop.